to do a keynote. Uh, they did this for several years ago at the Down Syndrome Congress in Atlanta, Georgia. And Down Syndrome Congress is a huge conference, primarily for parents of kids with Down Syndrome. But they, all, but they also bring the kids, because concurrent with the conference, they always have a program for kids. And they have about four to five thousand kids and four to five thousand people at this conference. So Atlanta, Georgia, they held it at the CNN Center, the place that Ted Turner built. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to this place, but this place exudes wealth. All right, all the Fortune 500 companies have regional offices there. Celebrities are coming and going. You have um, chauffeurs and limousines and Armani suits. And so um, I go into this place, I check in, I go down for dinner, and the ordinary restaurant is closed. So I have to eat at this very expensive, very elegant Italian dining room. And I don't care because I'm on an expensive couch. <laughs> so I am going to this restaurant. Um, and I need you to know, I don't get intimidated by elegant restaurants, all right? I know, you know, which forks to use for which course. You know, I know which plates are mine. <laughs> so I go out to elegant restaurants. But I got intimidated at this restaurant. The guy who intimidated me was the maitre d'. Because the maitre d' was a guy that was 65 years old, very thick Italian accent. But the way he intimidated me by like how he showed me to my chair. Because he had the whole process of seating someone choreographed like a Japanese tea ceremony. <laughs> or he'd go over and pull out the chair, take the napkin out, and go flick it in the air. The napkin would have to leap pop, right? He's snapping his fingers at bread waiters and coming at water waiters. Out of thin air, he pops a menu. He goes, might I recommend, sir, the veal moussel, the portobello mushrooms, the French brandy reduction. I probably recommend in 1988 Australian Shiraz with that. I'm going, oh, go away. <laughs> I'm fascinated by this guy because he is such a real character study, right? So I uh, um, later, so I keep watching this guy, and this guy goes back up the seating podium at the front of the restaurant. A family comes up, and they have a kid about eight or nine years old with Down syndrome. So he starts that whole Japanese tea ceremony seating again. And halfway over to the table, bang, the kid takes up. And he starts going from table to table to table to table, grabbing all the flowers out of all the business. The maitre d' sees this, he goes, no, 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 runs after the kid and um, gets the kid, brings the kid, puts the whole family at the table, gives them the menu, and says, try the veal. <laughs> <laughs> runs around, puts all the flowers back in the vases, and goes back to the podium. Now, you can see this guy's a bit flustered but he recovers beautifully. He gets back up to the sitting podium, there's another family there. 
They also have a kid with Down syndrome. I can see the symmetry go. <laughs> and so he starts showing this family their table. Now, this kid, for some reason, really liked the maitre d. And the way he showed this was by hugging the maitre d's leg and not letting go. So <laughs> then the maitre d trying to show this family to the table, dragging this kid along the floor. The other kid with Down syndrome sees this and realizes the Major D can no longer run. Oh no. And so he gets up and gets all the flowers again. The Major D sees this, rips the kid off his leg, puts the family up in the nearest tail, throws down the menu, goes, eat what you want. Goes up and the bitch kid gets hit back to the table, runs around. Puts all the flowers back at the boxes and goes back up to the restaurant at the singing podium. Now you know this guy is pissed, all right? His cummerbund is crooked, his shirt is sticking out, he's sweaty, his hair is all messed up. He gets there front of the restaurant and what's there is a long line of people. And every family has a kid with Down syndrome. And you can see this guy go, no. Because you got to remember, this is probably the most elegant restaurant in, um, in Atlanta. And it's his job to keep it this way. And then he did something that I remember for the rest of my life. It was like a switch went off in his head. And he went, ah, the hell with it. <laughs> and he became who he really was. And that was an Italian grandfather. And rather than being a restaurant, that room became his dining room. And rather than customers, those people who became his family. So he just assumed the role of the dying grandmother. Hey, come on then. Okay, you want flowers? Okay, we give you lots of flowers. Oh, he was dancing. He was giving kids piggyback rides. For the four days I stayed there, it was the most chaotic, noisy, <laughs> hilarious, warm-loving restaurant I've ever been at. And um, so I would fly home after the conference. I said, there's an important thing to learn here. I said, um, you know, I think all of us have grown up and lived in society that requires us to earn a right to belong. And one of the criteria often is, is that we have everything running perfectly. We have everything running like clockwork. We have everything organized and um, in order and we're in control of everything. And that's the beauty of disabled kids. Because they come into that perfectly organized world and they screw it up. But in screwing it up, what they remind us is life is supposed to be messy. Life is supposed to be ambiguous. But if we can trust that, if we can fight off our, our impulse to panic and just hang out in that messiness and ambiguity, there will be magical moments of connection, magical moments of learning, magical moments of humanity. The minute we try to stomp out the messiness will be the minute we stomp out the magic as well. So I understand that many of you are here wanting to learn strategies 
about how to support kids with disabilities, and that's really great. <coughs> but we'd also like to make a request of you. Some point today, take two or three minutes out of your busy life, take some time for yourself, and in that moment of silence, try to rediscover the Italian grandfather within yourself and liberate yourself. So thank you for your time. Thank you very much.